He is right. The Donald's right when he says that had that Kyle Rittenhouse, 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, not defended himself, he definitely would have been killed or great bodily harm would have came to him. They were hunting him down and they got the wrong end of the lead. Up next. So, I'm not going to rehash this. I already did a stream that YouTube took down because they didn't like the angles right after this happened that I covered all the different camera angles that clearly showed how Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself, that he had been attacked and cornered and whatnot. So I'm not going to go through all those again, but I do simply want to cover a little bit of this daily news um, or da yeah, the daily news, the daily mail article, and just show you how they, they, they word this, that, that we're, we're up against. And this isn't anything new to any of the people who follow me. We all know this, but I mean, if you haven't been paying attention, you've been living under a rock. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse went out and um, to help in the Kenosha, Wisconsin riots, the fiery pre peaceful protests that were taking place in Kenosha. He went out to um, defend businesses from these in these minor a lot of them minority uh, uh, communities uh, that were getting burnt to the ground. Car lots getting burnt to the ground. Uh, mini marts getting burnt to the ground. Businesses getting burnt to the ground. People rioting over a shooting that was completely justified. As sad as it might be for the the, the people of uh, Jacob Balake when he was shot seven times in the back. That was 100% on Jacob Balake for doing that. That was not anyone, that was, that was not cops out hunting Jacob, right? Jacob made some really bad life choices and they ended up with him now possibly being paralyzed for the rest of his life, right? But that's 100% on him. But because it was a white cop and a black man that gets shot, the narrative of the leftist media that wants to inflame the nation and wants to divide us and wants stuff to burn because it's an election year and because they want to push farther than they have ever pushed with their Marxist leftist agenda, right? They want to push farther, far as they possibly can with all their postmodern Frankfurt school, um, you know, intersectionality, victim Marxist, burn the nation down agenda. They want to push that as far and get as much life out of that as they can, that they're taking and exploiting any kind of shooting that fits the narrative, any kind of violence that they think they can twist to fit the narrative. They don't want to twist the narrative when it comes to a five-year-old little white boy getting shot in the head by a black man simply for coming into the guy's yard. They don't just mind his own business playing playing on his, you know, his bike and he gets shot in the head. That doesn't get any news coverage. Can you imagine if it was a black boy and got shot by a white man? Can you imagine how the, the country would be burning to the ground right now? But no, that's not what happened. It was a little white boy that gets shot, right, by a black piece of shit thug that shoots this kid for no good goddamn reason and the, nobody's talking about it but a thug an actual thug that was a had felonies out for him violent he was a violent felon right that had had warrants out for arrest for domestic abuse and i believe sexual assault who was resisting arrest got tased refusing to uh, to 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 um it complied to the commands when he was there and he was called out on a domestic, the cops were called on a domestic dispute. That's why they got called out to there. And they, the guy had a knife in his hand prior, prior to that. Walks around the car, we know the story, gets in the car, gets shot seven times in the back, right? Because he is refusing. Cops don't know what he's going to get and that bad cops should have probably tackled him. They were kind of, in that situation, I'm not going to say bad cops. I'm just going to say, man, too bad they couldn't have tackled him before that. But then they probably would have narrative would have got, look at this, police brutality. Cops are just tackling black men, minding their own business. Tackling them. Then they would have had to restrain him, and there would have been a whole nother, I can't breathe, or whatever. That's on Jacob Balake for getting shot. And then they burn the city down because they're the useful idiots out there. And those who just want to riot and cause mayhem, right? They, they are, they seize on any opportunity to get them some reparations. They're, they're looting reparations as one of the uh, um, uh, Black Lives Matter um, uh, um, uh, officials or, or, or organizers or part of the black recently said about what was happening. I think it was in Chicago a few weeks back, a couple weeks back. Anyways, Kyle Rittenhouse went out to defend and keep people from burning stuff down and also be there for, for anybody who needed medical. Not just some white people that need a medical. Anybody, right? He gets threatened earlier on in the night by the guy who took one to, to took a, a a couple hot leads to the face. He is he got challenged by that guy earlier. That guy was wanting to to beat his ass earlier in the night. Was telling was daring him to shoot him, 
was dropping the N-word and telling him to shoot him. Shoot me, shoot me, nigga, shoot me, nigga. You know, threatening him. And then later on, chasing him down with a Molotov, Molotov cocktail, throws it at him, right? Kyle gets, is running for his life, gets cornered by this guy who wants to beat the crap out of him, take his weapon, and God knows do what to him. We see what happened with some of these Antifa and leftists in Portland, what they do when they're armed and ready to go, what they want to do. And people out there who think that, that you can compare what happened in Wisconsin with what happened in our shithole Portland or Oregon did, um, this weekend, they're not even in the same. They're not even in the same uh, uh, um, universe together. They are completely, completely separate situations. So Donald Trump coming out and defending Kyle Rittenhouse, I applaud him for that. I'm so glad he he did that. And that's not him pouring fire, pouring gas on the fire division. That's him standing up for the truth and speaking the truth and not capitulating to this bullshit narrative coming from the left. And capitulating and bowing down and being milk toast and being cucky and being watered down and saying, well, you know, he probably shouldn't have been out there. He was a 17-year-old with a long rifle. I mean, ooh, okay. There you can you can hit him with his misdemeanor charge of his of having a having a gun um, a year before he's technically allowed to right. It's funny because in in God knows if he's 12 months away or six months away from being 18. But at 18 we can send people over into the to 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 fight for our oil and to fight in the in, in, over in the the sand pits in the e, Middle East. We can send them over there to dodge bullets at 18. But here, uh, um, in, uh, domestically, a 17-year-old defending property and wanting to be there to help. He's a good kid, man. Maybe a little, uh, you know, um, um, a little too uh, um, excitable or, you know, too, a little too uh, um, didn't think out his maneuvers the best he's, as he could have, putting himself in some situations. But again, that is not at all. No, I take that back. That, I'm not going to even take anything away from this kid at all, right? He was out there with a good heart wanting to protect property and help people. He gets chased down by these peaceful, fiery, fiery protesters that are burning stuff down. That The left wants to, 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 to put an onion, you know, a, Bumba, a Babylon Bee type article out. Um, Chris, whatever his name is, um, some moron from the, the Clown News Network that wants to say these are mostly peaceful pr protesting with, with a fiery background, with businesses burning engulfed in flames in the background. We are under an attack in America. The American way of life is definitely under attack. And all these useful idiots out there are just that. Useful idiots not understanding. Most of them don't even understand. The agenda that is behind all of this is a complete and total destruction of America. That is what we are witnessing right now. So Donald Trump coming out and saying that Kyle Rittenhouse was a hero. He was. President Donald Trump defended the actions of Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin, saying the 17-year-old probably would have been killed. He probably would have been. He was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like, and he fell down, and they, they violently attacked him, Trump said in the DailyMail.com. I guess he was uh, in very big trouble. He probably would have been killed. It's under investigation, he said in his press briefing. Rittenhouse left his home in Illinois to patrol streets of uh, Kenosha with an illegal AR-15. I love how they frame this. They fed, frame him as a vigilante and he has an illegal AR-15. Well, number one, he could have the AR-15 and shoot the AR-15 if he had certain exemptions. It's not that it's an illegal AR-15, right? Now, if he's 17 years old, there could be some technicalities there where he should not be able to have that guy be carrying that gun yet out and, out and around in the streets. But it is open carry in Kenosha, but he may not have been legally allowed to be carrying that. So I think it's a misdemeanor. So, okay, slap him on the wrist. For that he was out there trying to defend himself again we've covered this right and, and defend property out there he tripped and fell while running in the street and was hit over the head by a protester anthony huber who had a skateboard and wanted to disarm him see how they word that he, he was hit over there. they wanted to disarm him no they didn't they wanted to take his gun and use it on him that's probably what they wanted to do at that point rittenhouse in response opened fire and ended up killing huber one person and injuring a third Trump goes to Kenosha on Tuesday. This piece of shit article, um, and it's not just this one. It's all of them, man. All of the, the way they spin this. and they If you guys watched it, the, the thing is here, we're not dumb. If you guys have watched it, which we all have multiple times, all the angles, it is clear he's defending himself, completely defending himself, right? But then if you go to something like, um, something like this, right, over here to this article, um, let's see if I can get a picture here. This guy... Uh, Chandler Pappas pictured was Aaron J. Danielson, 39, um, 
was with Aaron J. Danielson, 39, on Saturday as Black Lives Matter protesters. I love how they say that. He was actually an Antifa, 100% out of his own mouth clashed with Trump supporters who drove in a caravan throughout the city. Papa told Common Sense Conservative, we recognized our Patriot prayer hats. They recognized our Patriot prayer hats. They executed my partner. They hunted him down. That kid right there. And they did. They absolutely did. This kid in in Portland um, was attacked by a piece of shit. Antifa. I get so angry at these guys. I have no, and because they hate, they hate, they hate, they hate. They spread nothing but hate. They pretend like conservatives and those on the right are the fascists. They pretend like we're the fascists. They pretend like we're the fascists simply because we want free speech. Uh, because we want to be able to carry our guns and have have our right to own our, own our weapons, because we love freedom in America, and because all in all, we just want to be left alone and have, a, have freedom and joy and peace and enjoy our families and not be constantly bombarded with this leftist, far leftist ideology, this Marxist-based ideology, right, that wants to tear everything down, wants to remove all of the pillars of goodness, of righteousness, of normal n- normality, right? Wants to remove all those and rebuild it into this utopias Marxist wonderland of this postmodern intersectional, um, n- everything is subjective wonderland. This, they, they, they are the most intolerant people you will ever meet. And they say they're the most tolerant. And we're the ones who are intolerant. Simply because if we say a guy's a guy, if he has a penis and a girl's a girl, she's got a JJ, right? And because we don't want crazy leftist ideology shoved down the throats of our kids. We want to raise them under how we want to raise them. Then you are a ignorant, a bigoted, close-minded, intolerant asshole that must die. So here in uh, Oregon, opposed to somebody who was defending himself and running for his life, you have somebody that was called out on the street by this Antifa thug piece of shit, right? And they start coming over to him. He goes to spray him down with a little bit of uh, um, uh, mace, right? Which is the is the tool of choice. Well, one of the major tools of choice from the Antifa, that and shit and piss and now apparently bullets. And the guy in cold blood caps him twice in his chest. Just caps him twice. Right there. Because he's a pussy. He's a pussy. That's all Antifa are. All you Antifa, any of you watch this, you're pussies. You're pussies. You're worthless, shithole pussies. And you're waking up a lion. And I don't say that because I'm excited about the pushback that's going to come. What inevitably is coming. I don't say that excited like that's what I want. I don't want to see civil war on our streets. But piece by piece, we're getting there. And then you have this being already set up, right? Um, I think it's this one here. No, this one here. Yeah, they already set this up. They're gathered left and the Democrats are gaslighting the hell out of the public. And the media is right there in their corner. Right there backing them up, doing it all the gaslighting. You got the Democrats coming out blaming Trump for all this unrest. The guy who's been saying this needs to stop, I'll, you say, give me the word and I'll send in the troops to stop it. Which I'm not thrilled on that idea. I don't think that's a good option either. But the person who obviously does not want this and they're gaslighting him and saying it's his fault. They're also gaslighting you saying the recession is Trump's fault. Right? Because of this whole coronavirus uh, a fiasco and lie. It's a lie. This pandemic that has changed our world and it will probably never be 100% the same as it was just eight, nine months ago. It's a lie. It's a lie. The CDCs came out and ultimately basically said, if you can read between the lines, it's a lie. 94% of people that died from COVID had comorbidity. There was only 6%. 6% that died exactly from COVID. They didn't have any comorbidities that they knew of. Doesn't mean they didn't have an underlying cancer that wasn't diagnosed yet or an underlying health condition that wasn't. It just means it wasn't diagnosed yet. But you can take 6%, which is roughly 10,000 people, 10,000 people out of the 150,000 that have been killed here in America from COVID-19, 
10% or, or 10,000 of them died directly from the virus. Viruses are bad. Viruses kill people every year. The flu, flu kills 30 to 60,000 people a year. And through all of this now, we're calling, through all of this where we've ruined everything. And that's from the left. That's from not the, just the Democrats. It goes deeper than just the Democrats. Don't fool yourself on that one. This is a, a, a world agenda that is being rolled out by people who have no real allegiance to the U.S. They are globalists. That is not a conspiratorial thing to say. They are globalists. These Bill Gates of the world. You have the World Economic Forum coming out talking about the Great Reset. If you haven't looked up the Great Reset, if you haven't Googled the Great Reset, Google the Great Reset and read what the agenda for the Great Reset looks like. And then tell me this pandemic scamdemic is not something that was um, planned and put into place by people that want the World Health Organization, the World Health or, or World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, the CDC, Gavi, the Bill Gates of the world. All of these globalist agendas that want to roll out a globalist uh, agenda for the world and for America um, are behind this. Because there, like I said, hardly anybody died, right? But then you have this guy, this democratic data, uh, democratic data firm predicts chaos. Getting back to this whole civil war that's about ready to kick off. Democrat data firm predicts chaos on election night with Donald Trump set for apparently landslide victory, which will take days to be revealed as victory for Joe Biden thanks to postal votes. So this guy comes out and says, where's he at right here? Let's just listen to what he says. But before, before I, I play what he has to say here, just keep in mind, the left knows they're going to lose. So they're already setting up with Kamala Harris saying that we're never going to stop. We're never going to stop. Joe Biden saying, do you really think Tr Donald Trump is going to stop these riots from happening if he gets elected? That's a veiled threat. That seems like a veiled threat saying, hey, if, this, if you guys elect Donald Trump, we're going to continue to burn America until you give in to our leftist agenda, until you let us Democrats back in office and to run this joint. They're threatening us. They're, it's literally, I mean, it could be taken another way to like, they're trying to gaslight you saying it's all Donald Trump's fault and he's not going to stop it, which is obviously not the truth. You have Kamala Harris, though. When you look at it through what Kamala Harris has said with Stephen, Stephen Colbert, when she came out and said that we're never going to stop. This isn't going to stop. It doesn't matter after the election. We're going to go, go, go. We're going to push. And she's basically, without saying it, giving her, um, 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 you know, kind of a implicit, um, she's implying a approval to those causing this chaos to continue to do it until we get Trump out of office. By any means necessary, get Trump out of office and get our country back the way the left wants this country, which the left, what they want is they just want total control and they're going to capitulate and lay down and they'll be the next ones on the chopping block to this leftist animal that they think they now control. They don't control that, right? These globalists know they can get that all under control. Once these useful idiots have burned everything down, then they'll come in with an iron fist and they'll take control. But this guy, they're already in so many ways setting the stage for if Trump wins, because it's either way, whoever wins this in November, November is going to be a bloody November. And, and for God knows how long after that, because nobody on the left is going to accept Donald Trump again. He may be an assassinated. And I hate to say that, but I, I feel like that's something that I really, God, I hope doesn't happen. But I, I could see it happening. I really could. They are not. If he wins again, the country for, for a very long time is going to be at, at complete and total unrest. And then if, they, if the left wins, that's a, it's a joke if they win, right? And then you're going to have people on the right. The, the upside to that is the people on the right are not going to rise up quite as hard as the people on the left will, is what I think. I think there's going to be some pushbacks and there's going to be some definite riots and protests for that but we're not going to go and burn shit down because that's not what we do we're good people that don't want to burn shit down we want these leftist marxist scum sucking pieces of crap out of our world but we don't want to just burn stuff down but listen to what he has to say i'm, I'm gonna throw these on so i can listen to uh, by, by definition, is something that appears to be there, but that doesn't really exist. And you have a model scenario called the Red Mirage. What does that mean? The reason we talk about a Red Mirage is, in fact, because we believe that on election 
election night, we are going to see Donald Trump in a stronger position mm -hmm. than the reality actually is. Oh, no. no, see, that is the reality. He is in one. But see, what they're going to do is they're going to manipulate and they're going to change it and they're going to control it because right now they know that uh, he's he, there's no way we can, we can, with a straight face, say that he is not... Um, with Democrats leaving, Democrats leaving the party, uh, um, defecting to the right, there's no way we can actually sell to people that he really, that Donald Trump's really winning right now or, or losing. And so they're already setting up the narrative with this. They're already setting up the narrative. Oh, was that it? Okay, that was it. So yeah, up here he says in this, these bullet points, the CEO of Dem uh, Democratic Political Agency predicted chaos on election day. I, I do too. Uh, Josh Mendelson told Axios on HBO in an interview that will air Sunday evening that the firm Hawkfish has a theory of a red mirage in November. We believe that on election night we're going to see Donald Trump in a stronger position um, than the reality actually is. He suggested that after mail-in ballot ballots are accounted for, <laughs> mail-in ballots, right? We can go protest in the street, but we can't have uh, we can't have people vote in public. We can go vote test, uh, protest in the street um, about mail-in ballots, but we can't actually go and mail mail people mail-in ballots because of this uh, coronavirus that six percent that ten thousand people have died from. Ten thousand six million cases. I believe it is up to now, something like that. Six million cases. Am I right on that? Let me look here. Um, I think I just saw a graph. Open that up twice. Six million cases, I want to say, is what... Uh, yeah, right here. Let's open that up. Where is that at? Six million cases have been... More than 180,000 Americans have died of the coronavirus as of Monday. Um, and I want to say on here, it said 6 million cases have been confirmed. Yeah. Doesn't want to put that out again, but 6 million cases roughly in the United States, or maybe that's worldwide. What does that say there? What's that say there? Total cases. Yeah. In the U S 6 million, 6 million people in the U S right. Ooh, Miley looking a little scantily dressed there. Um, Six million cases, 180,000 deaths. 94% of those people that died of those were over the age of 65 and had comorbidities. 6% died just from the CV, around 10,000. And yet we can't go vote in public. Or we can't go vote in person, right? And so with this whole thing, because we can't go vote in person, we have to have mail-in ballots. And out of those mail-in ballots, Donald Trump's going to lose. Well, that's not even completely true. I don't even know if that's completely true. But this is the kind of chaos that we're living in right now where they're already gaslighting us and setting us up for that. And then you have Biden coming out and he says, do I look like a, do I look like a radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters? Really? Joe Biden slams Donald Trump for linking him to violence and accuses president of poisoning our very democracy. The gaslighting, the projection is, un, uh, is unbelievable that Donald Trump is the one, Donald Trump is the one that is gaslighting people. It's unbelievable to me. It's really, truly unbelievable. It's Donald Trump's fault for gaslighting. In Pittsburgh's speech denouncing rivals' leadership. Look at old Sleepy Joe, man. Watch him. Violence will not bring change. It will only bring destruction. It's wrong in every way. It divides instead of unites. Destroys businesses, only hurts the working families that serve the community. Really? Who's been saying that the whole time, Joe? Who's been saying that the whole time, Joe? It makes things worse across the board, not better. Duh. No, it's not what uh, Dr. King or John Lewis taught. Nope. And it must end. Yeah. Now they're coming out because they're saying polling's bad. Where was your voice on this when the whole country was burning? You sleepy, ridiculous ridiculously dementia laden old man and do 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 you look like if you're asking us seriously joe if you're asking us seriously do you look like a socialist with a soft spot for writer no you look like a sleepy old man who is only there for show and tell 
You're only there for show and tell. But that Kamala Harris, she is an established established, uh, uh, golden child. She will do whatever the deep state, the deep establishment wants her to do. And she's a far, she's a pretty damn, I don't think she's actually that far of left. She's pretending to be one. But she'll pull out any stops uh, politically uh, expedient for her to do that. And if that's taking away your guns, you're going to take away your guns. If that's pretending like she wants to give reparations and all this other bullshit, that's what she's going to do. And she's the one we're looking at, Joe. Nobody's taking you seriously, Joe, that we that you think you're, you're going to be around. Joe, come on, man. You don't, you can't debate Donald Trump. You you can't even read a scripted interview, right, where everything's scripted for you without bubbling, uh, bum, bumbling and bubbling and bumbling and bubbling. He sounds like shit. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's not fanning these flames. This is the gaslighting. Do you see this gaslighting taking place? Donald Trump is fanning the flames? Rather than fighting the flames. Oh, my God. But we must not burn. We have to build. This is President long ago. Forfeited. He looks like he's about to fall asleep right there. He's like, this President... I can't read what I was saying long before. Any moral leadership in this country. He can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it. He's fomented the violence. Donald Trump has fomented the violence because you've seen so many alt right, uh, far right rallies where they burn shit down and they're fomenting. Oh, no, no, no. That's right. That's not our side doing that. That's not our side. We're the ones calling it out and saying it needs to stop. And what does the left do? They don't say shit. No. Till now. Believe. Till now, because it's expedient, uh, expedient for them to do so. Polling shows it's good for them to do that. Mouthing the words, law and order makes him strong. But his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Does anybody believe what that shithead just said? Does anybody believe that he's not called, that, that he hasn't, uh, talking about calling on his supporters, his armed supporters? What about calling on your armed uh, far left wing of the, the party, right? You're not, they're really not your supporters, but they're voting for you, right? They're really not your supporters, but, they, but they're pretending to be. Why, why, why can't you guys call them out? I just get so angry. Does anyone believe there'll be less violence in America if Donald Trump is reelected? We need justice in America. We need safety in America. Exactly what we need, Joe. And it is exactly what you guys on the left are absolutely opposed to, apparently. Is, is uh, justice. Is peace. All you do is, is, is promote violence. All they do is promote violence. And then they have the ball sack. They got the balls, man. They got the cojones hanging down to their knees to come out and blame that on conservatives and on Trump. I have my issues with Trump right now. Anybody who's been following me knows it. I'm disheartened about the whole vaccine push from him. That really bothers me, right? I wish earlier on he would have stuck to his guns on this when it came to the coronavirus and would have played it out like Sweden did, right? We would have handled it differently. I wish we would have handled it differently. But he was in a no-win situation, too. If he would have handled it differently, then all of these deaths would would have already been put on all on the back of his his shoulders. They already are, too. But we've covered a lot in this. We've covered that we're being pushed into a situation out of a scamdemic that is a bunch of bullshit. We're being gaslit by the left and by the Democrats because um, trying to say that it's Trump's fault for the riots, it's Trump's fault for the economic downturn, it's Trump's fault for all the, the burning and, and the looting and the craziness in this country. Right? That Kyle Rittenhouse was a murderer, but has the left came out and, and, and pushed against the actual Antifa murderer that happened this weekend? No. They frame it again as some alt-right white supremacists that basically had it coming to them. You are living in an upside down world and unless we rise up with our voice and we push back and we quit 
We quit capitulating and we quit complying to this bullshit. Things are going to get really serious really fast come November. I don't know how we don't have some serious shit hit the fan. I don't understand how that happens. It doesn't happen. So be safe. Watch your back because now whites are getting hunted. Whites are literally getting hunted and getting getting targeted. Don't take your don't take anger out on the people and the useful idiots out there, but protect yourself and keep your head on a swivel. And when the time comes, if the time comes, be ready to defend your family at whatever costs. Stand for truth, stand for justice, stand for uh, uh, peace, stand for um, enjoying your family and wanting to take care of your family and working hard and enjoying and pushing for liberty and freedom. Stand for those things and don't tolerate and don't stand and don't capitulate for this bullshit left. Stand up on your social medias. Speak the truth about from Black Lives Matter to any other thing that doesn't sit right with you. Speak the truth. Because if you don't, you will lose it. You will lose your speech and you will lose, the truth will become, you'll lose it. Just like I lost my thought. Till next time, it's SJG Perspective. Like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll talk when we talk. Without fear or animus, it's SJG Perspective. Bye.